What up friends, what a meaningless void we live in. And today I'm going to be reviewing Black Midi's newest album, Cavalcade. This is the sophomore album of the London-based experimental rock band Black Midi. The first record gained a lot of attention in the music community just because there's not really a lot of people doing what Black Midi are doing right now. Pulling inspiration from art rock, math rock, post-punk, and now like jazz fusion, you always know you're in for something fucking insane when it comes to Black Midi records, and I have to say, this one did not disappoint. With John L, we are off to a hectic and cacophonous start with those erratic guitar patterns galore and the very in-your-face vocals as well. Those strings had a very jarring edge to the track, but in like a good way, and all these elements just keep piling on top of the, each other in a really like spontaneous and interesting fashion. It's like things falling apart but in a very organized way and I feel like this really captures the lyrics describing how people shouldn't attach themselves and worship these like gods, idols, even people like musicians and how it leads to destruction as no hack with an army will last long before he breeds men who yearn for their own bloody glory. This album also sees the band exploring their softer sides, and I think Marlene Dietrich is a perfect example of that. I love the melodic guitar and the very delicate vocals on this one. The string segments are wistful and melancholic, and they set the stage for a surprising amount of emotion in this track. This especially comes true in the lyrics talking about a performance by Mary Magdalene and how she kind of had to hide her pain from the crowd. Now we're heading back into the more erratic and chaotic side of things with Chondromalacia Patella, that's the name of the track, and it's by far the jazziest song up until this point. With all the chaos that can occur during this song, the drums and pianos provide a sense of structure and calm. The vocals also have a more airy vibe to them, serving more as ambient pieces this time around. The bombastic last third brings the energy back in, arriving to a very decisive and great finish for the track overall. I think these elements, with their chaos and whatnot, fit the lyrics about just the idea and experience of aging and growing old. It really has some like 80s post-punk vibes to it too, which I also really appreciate. Next up we get to Slow, and I really love the build-up on this one. It's jazzy punk guitar and more sinister vocals help it stand out a lot from the crowd. And I, the progression on this one is just great. All of that and its rapid progression probably make this track one of my favorites on the record. And I think it does a great job in showing how repetition and breaking that repetition can really hammer home a sense of unease. This uneasiness also translates to the lyrics as well, seemingly describing a person that's kind of like waiting for death, but it's not coming quickly, so he has the anxiety of when is death going to come. He just would rather just have it over and done with immediately. It's an interesting perspective. The, the horns at the end are just god tier. Like, this might be my second favorite on the record overall. Diamond Stuff is probably my least favorite on the album, mostly just because it's pretty boring compared to everything else on here. The instrumental is fairly barren, which is a pretty stark contrast with how full and lush the rest of the album feels. It definitely establishes an aesthetic, and the lyrics are pretty poetic, if anything. However, there's not very much of them to cover for the uninteresting and repetitive guitar picking and ambient sounds that are going on on this one. With Dethroned, like, you know you're in for some good shit when it starts with the brass. I love the groove here, especially when they start adding more and more elements to the track. The vocals are super chill and that bass is just insane. I love that sort of like siren-like guitar picking and how the whole to uh, tone of the track is sort of mocking. Like it's mocking this person's fall from grace that's described in the lyrics. It's a great mix of low-key and energetic and that wall of sound that the guitar takes on every so often, like it's pretty fantastic. It honestly makes me think of like some songs off of Rush's older albums, the more experimental, long-winded, and like concept-like songs. It really evokes that sort of vibe. Back to the cacophonous nature a la John L, Hogwash and Balderdash is a very bombastic lead into the outro of the record. It also has an interesting combination of the sort of straightforward idols-like talking styled vocals and the more melodic styled vocals too. 
I don't think it really does a lot to stand out compared to the other tracks on here, and it kind of just sits in John L's shadow for me, but it's definitely not a bad song. There's some amusing story-like lyrics to it, but I feel like it just sort of abruptly ends just when it's starting to get good. Finally, we have Ascending Fourth, and what a fucking closer. Super great buildup with the acoustic guitar before those lush horns, those drums, like everything is just let in in such an awe-inspiring fashion. It's like a journey almost, like you're starting at the bottom before you begin to ascend. I also really love the imagery and the story and the lyrics describing an artist trying to break away from the norm and produce something unique when it seems like everything's already been done. I kind of wonder if it's almost a metaphor for the band themselves in a way. However, at the end of the day, it really is true. Everybody does love Ascending Fourths. Black Mini just keep making the weirdest and coolest stuff in rock right now. It's always a wonder where they'll go next, but honestly, this album just expanded upon and evolved their previous album in every way. The instrumentals were lush and varied, and they also didn't sacrifice their vocals or their lyrics to get there. I suppose sometimes it can kind of sound like experimentation for experimentation's sake, and occasionally I the, the tracks can get a little bit samey, however these are incredibly minor criticisms. I think they should just keep up the good work and keep being crazy, keep on wowing. I'm feeling a decent 8 on this record overall. Of course we do have to talk about the album cover on this show, and like their previous album cover, this one is also great, it's super abstract. <laughs> it reminds me of those images that replicate what a stroke feels like, but honestly I feel like that really fits the erratic nature of the record, yet it also has a subtle beauty to it too, kind of like their organized chaos of sound. Uh, so I think this album cover fits the record perfectly, really pleasant to look at, I don't have any complaints with it. Of course, those are just my thoughts on the album. What did you guys think? Did you agree that this was basically an improvement on all fronts? Or are they just a little too chaotic for their own good? Let me know. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell if you don't want me to have a stroke. And until the next one, farewell.